Before we begin, I wanted to tell you guys about the K-pop countdown challenge that I'm hosting on the cruise. So I recently posted a twice K-pop countdown update on my Instagram. If you haven't seen it yet, then be sure to check it out. And I'm curious to know whether you guys agree with me on the hardest dance. So I decided to partner up with the cruise to host a special challenge. All you have to do is to download the cruise and submit a video of what you believe is the hardest twice dance moment. The top three responses Responses with the most likes will receive a copy of Twice's latest album Taste of Love in addition to other cool merchandise. And if you want me to personally like your response, then follow me on Instagram, leave a like on my Twice K-pop countdown post as well as a comment with a link to your submission. So what are you waiting for? Download the cruise and participate in my challenge today. I will definitely be taking a look at all of your responses. Whether it's cute, elegant, sexy, mystical, girl crush, or dark, concepts determine the look and feel of every K-pop production and are essential in defining an artist's creative direction and identity. Over the years, different concepts have fallen in and out of popularity, and most artists will try to adapt to and incorporate trending concepts in their music in order to keep up with the times. But as the K-pop industry becomes more saturated, there are an increasing number of artists who have decided to take the unconventional route and attempt to stand out from the crowd by taking on bizarre and sometimes outrageous concepts. <laughs> In this series, we will be exploring some of the most unique groups to ever exist in the history of K-pop. So sit tight and brace yourselves because you're watching Crazy K-pop Concepts. From their tall physique to their manly charms, it's no surprise that boy groups captured the hearts of many adoring fans. But what if I told you that these are actually girls? Nani? That's right guys, Fancy Red are a self-proclaimed boy group consisting of all female members. So Fancy Red, who was previously known as FFCA Crush, first debuted in China in 2017 before finally making their Korean debut in 2019. With their boyish looks and deep voices, FFCA Crush. the members of Fancy Red are, unsurprisingly, often mistaken for men. But this concept isn't just skin deep. All the members were actually handpicked specifically for their tomboyish personalities. Member Lu Keran said that she had short hair since she was a child, and one of the former members, Min Junqian, even got top surgery and recently married another female. So this group's boyish concept is truly genuine and an authentic way for the members to express their actual styles and personalities. But aside from them, there have also been other androgynous idols such as FX's Amber, who previously stated that she enjoys having a more gender-neutral concept, as well as 2AM's Jokwon, who recently came out as being genderless. While these artists have unfortunately faced scrutiny from the public, they stayed true to themselves and eventually managed to gain acceptance and even establish a loyal fan base. Of course, I love the fact that these idols are out here breaking gender norms and representing the LGBTQ community. And I honestly also have to give credit to their companies for allowing and supporting these artists to express their authentic selves. But unfortunately, not all gender bending groups are as authentic. Introducing Global Icon, a five member ensemble consisting of Ha Yoon, Won Ket, Eunji, Ai, and Aram. Marketed as the first boyish girl group in K pop, Global Icon unfortunately struggled to maintain their concept and faced somewhat of an identity crisis throughout their entire career. And if that wasn't strange enough, the backstory behind their concept has to be one of the most bizarre things I have ever seen. Before I jump into this ridiculous story, I wanted to give a shout out to one of my favorite K-pop channels, Midnight Theories. 
So I had already finished researching and preparing for this video when I realized that she had just uploaded a video about the very same group. I swear we have the same wavelength. Anyways, she was nice enough to give me the green light to upload this video and so I tried my best to make sure that our content didn't overlap too much and I think that our videos actually ended up being very different. So if you'd like to learn even more about Global Icon, then be sure to check out her video. I'll link it in the description. Okay, so this story requires me to kind of jump back and forth on the timeline, but I tried to make things as unconfusing as possible, and I also included a diagram over here so that you can see exactly where we are on the timeline, and hopefully that will make things a little bit clearer. Also, as with all of my other videos, everything I'm about to say is alleged, so please don't sue me. And with all of those disclaimers out of the way, let's jump straight into it. So the year was 2013, with songs like I Got A Boy, What You're Doing Today, Pretty Pretty and More dominating the charts, fun and girly concepts were all the rage. This year saw many girl groups sporting loud colors, bright clothing and cute accessories. On the other hand, sexy concepts were also gaining popularity with songs like Expectation, Wild and Hush. From cute to sexy, many believe that the entire spectrum of possible girl group concepts had already been covered. But what if a girl group took on a boy group's concept instead? Now that was something that most people hadn't even dreamed of. Until that dream became a reality, when on the 26th of March 2013, Shimtong Entertainment released these teaser images of Global Icon, their first girl group. From their short hair to their masculine clothes, Global Icon blew everybody's minds. Bear in mind, in 2013, the term girl crush hadn't even been popularized yet, and outside of 2NE1, there were pretty much no mainstream fierce or badass girl groups. In fact, girl groups at the time were still primarily marketed to a male audience, and as a result, Global Icon's tomboyish concept seemed almost counterintuitive, and many people were both curious and skeptical about the group. But Shintong Entertainment promised that Global Icon will stand out amongst other K-pop girl groups by bringing something new to the table in what they deemed a monotonous entertainment scene. And stand out from the crowd they did. On the 4th of April 2013, Global Icon finally made their debut with the song Beatles. <laughs> fashion to the choreography, everything about this debut resembled a typical boy group of the time. While the group received mostly positive responses from the overseas audience, the Korean public seemed less keen about the concept. Many people found the group confusing and felt like Shimtong Entertainment should have simply debuted a boy group instead of debuting a girl group and then making them dress up like boys. And you know what? The ironic part was that these people were actually on the right track because according to member Hayun, it turns out the company had in fact originally planned on debuting a boy group. Unfortunately, they seem to have some trouble finding male trainees, and so they settled for the next best thing, which was to make their female trainees debut with a boy group concept instead. And don't think for a second that this was easy for the members. It turns out the members were actually pretty feminine in real life. <laughs> in an interview, the members revealed just how difficult it was for them to accept this concept. Ayi said, Actually, when I first heard that we were debuting as a boyish concept girl group, I didn't expect it to be this much. Our haircuts are not a female's cut but a man's and our hair was shaved completely. It was so hard because I felt like I had to change into a man instead of a boy. And one cat even revealed that she cried while recording their debut track. The members ended up spending months, quote, deprogramming their girlish tendencies and had to change everything about themselves from their style of dancing right down to their hand gestures, facial expressions, and voice. However, most people were unaware of what went on behind the scenes and assumed that Global Icon's masculine concept reflected the members' actual personalities. This resulted in the members often being mistaken for tomboys, lesbians, and even men. And IE once talked about how a woman approached her in a coffee shop to ask for her number. 
But while this is a light-hearted and somewhat funny story, the group also faced actual discrimination from certain members of the public, including some people that accused them of quote, spreading gay culture and encouraging cross-dressing. Some K-pop fans who were used to seeing feminine girl groups also hated on Global Icon for being unattractive and ugly. And that's not even to mention all of the unwanted lusty comments from fangirls who crowned the members as their gay icons despite the fact that the members had clearly expressed that they were straight, which must have no doubt been an uncomfortable experience to say the least. But regardless, whether it was positive or negative, the group did receive some attention. And just four months after their debut, they landed their first ad campaign with a Korean chicken restaurant called 94th Street. Unfortunately, even this didn't come without controversy, as the advertisement featured the members in high heels, fancy dresses, and long hair. This time, the group faced backlash from their very own fans, who criticized them for straying away from their original boyish concept. After a turbulent debut, Global Icon took a short break before returning in July with the pre-release digital single, Because of You, a ballad-style track that showcased the group's emotional side. Though the song received mostly positive comments, it was not available on Korean music websites and could only be found on, of all places, Thailand's iTunes store. Needless to say, the song barely received any attention and failed to chart. And things only went downhill from there when the group attempted to make their official comeback just a month later with the song Don't Lie featuring rapper Doki. This song had a strong hip-hop vibe and saw the members decked out in baggy clothing, beanies and bandanas. Unfortunately, the song got banned from all major broadcasting stations due to a few minor swear words in the lyrics, which in my opinion weren't even that bad. As a result, Global Icon ended up having to promote another song, Gyuk, instead. This time, the company stated that the group will be quote, upgrading their look from their previous tomboy image. Now, as you can imagine, this caused a lot of concern amongst fans, and their worries were validated when Gyuk was released. Having been criticized in the past for being both too boyish and too girlish, the group seemingly opted for a strange middle ground this time, with some scenes featuring the members in fully masculine attire doing typical boy group choreography, while other scenes featured the members in shorts doing surprisingly girly dance moves including hip swaying, and there were even a few butt and crotch zoom-ins. Overall, the group seemed to be facing an identity crisis, stuck between trying to incorporate girly elements in order to gain approval from the general public, while still trying to hold on to their original tomboy concept so as to not disappoint fans. And altogether, this just led to a jumbled and really confusing concept. Following the Giyuk promotions, member One Cat then participated in a dance competition hosted by beverage company Demi Soda, where she competed against members from other girl groups like AOA, Ladies Code, Rania, What's Up, Evil, and more for the chance to become Demi Soda's next brand ambassador. This competition, like most other dance competitions, required the contestants to choreograph their own routines and choose their own concepts. And so, having pressed her feminine side for so long, one cat obviously jumped on this opportunity to finally express her true personality by bringing sexy performances week after week. And boy did she bring sexy back. It was clear that this was one cat's element, as she glowed with confidence in each and every performance and ultimately ended up winning the competition. As a result, Global Icon got to star alongside the male winners My Name in Demi Soda's new campaign. Unfortunately, this campaign once again caused uproar amongst some Global Icon fans, as the promotional photo saw the girls portray almost a cute image, which was definitely a far 
cry from their once tough concept. Furthermore, while the fans who had been watching Demi Soda's dance competition knew that One Cat was the one who chose to do these sexy performances and were therefore fully supportive of it, the fans who had not been following the competition were shocked to see One Cat take on this concept, and without knowing the actual context and reasoning behind these sexy performances, started unfairly accusing Demi Soda of sexualizing One Cat in order to make their campaign more marketable. But by late 2014, fans had bigger things to worry about when it was revealed that member Ha Yoon had left the group and that Aram and One Cat had also filed lawsuits against Shintong Entertainment to terminate their contracts. But despite basically losing over half of their members and being embroiled in a bunch of lawsuits, Shintong Entertainment continued releasing content for Global Icon, including a new digital single titled Echo, which came with a one minute music video. Now, although the song itself was actually recorded in 2014, right before the members' departures, the footage from the music video had actually been recorded all the way back in 2012, before Global Icon even debuted. The footage showed the members' transformations from wearing high heels and fancy dresses to cutting their hair short and changing into masculine suits, which seemed to perfectly explain how Global Icon arrived at their boyish concept for their debut. However, things took an unexpected turn when Shintong Entertainment also uploaded what was meant to be Global Icon's original concept teaser, which was also filmed in 2012. And based off the fact that the members were sporting the same hairstyle seen at the end of the Echo music video, we can only assume that this concept teaser must have been filmed just shortly after the makeover footage from the Echo music video. But strangely, instead of flaunting the masculine concept shown at the end of the makeover, the members were instead presenting a very sexy and femme fatale image. So what was with all of these concept changes? And if Global Icon had already decided on the masculine concept as shown in the makeover footage, then why did they suddenly switch to the sexy concept for their teaser before then going back to the boyish concept for their actual debut? Well, it turns out that behind all of these concept changes lies an unbelievably bizarre and almost hilarious tale. And oh my gosh, I'm telling you guys, like this totally blew my mind and changed my perspective on the entire story so far. So sit tight and listen up because this is going to be slightly complicated but I promise you guys it's gonna be worth it. Okay, so in order to truly understand what happened, we need to basically rewind and take a second look at Global Icon's entire career so far. So here's a timeline containing Global Icon's main activities up to this point, and we will actually be starting our story all the way back in early to mid-2012, before the footage for the Echo music video was even filmed. You see, back then, Shintong Entertainment was only home to two artists, hip-hop duo Chris be crunched and female soloist Kim Sori. However, that was all about to change, as Shintong Entertainment was getting ready to debut their first K-pop group, Global Icon. Unfortunately, as a small company, Shintong Entertainment knew that their girl group likely did not stand a chance in the competitive and saturated K-pop industry. Unless, of course, they did something crazy. This was likely when Shintang Entertainment realized the abundance of sexy and cute girl groups and came up with the honestly ingenious idea of debuting a boyish girl group instead. And in order to put these plans into action, Shintang Entertainment planned the dramatic transformation photo shoot and even filmed and documented the entire process, as seen in the Echo music video. However, this photo shoot was never released, and plans for the debut seemingly came to an abrupt halt sometime in late 2012. Now, coincidentally, this was also when Shintong Entertainment happened to sign their first boy group Tritops to their label. 
Perhaps Shintang Entertainment didn't want Global Icon competing with their boy groups or something. Nobody really knows, but you'll see this pattern repeat itself again and again. And basically, right when Tritops joined was also when Global Icon made their switch from their previously masculine concept to a more sexy image as seen in their concept teaser. However, their new plans to debut as a sexy girl group were once again interrupted when in early 2013, the boy group Tritops decided to part ways with Shintang Entertainment. Desperate to fill this void, the president allegedly attempted to recruit male trainees to form a new boy group, but to no avail. At last, with the absence of any boy groups in the company's roster, Shintong Entertainment had no choice but to count on their girl group global icon to basically take on the position of being the company's stand-in boy group instead. And according to Hayun, this was the reason why Global Icon was ultimately made to return to the boyish concept for their debut with Beatles. But if that wasn't absurd enough, history basically repeated itself when Global Icon made their first comeback with Don't Lie and Geek. You may recall that Don't Lie and Geek were actually released less than a month apart, yet within this short period, their concept had shifted from this to this. So what prompted them to make this change? Well, it turns out that Don't Lie had actually been in the works since early 2013, when Global Icon was still fully committed to their tomboy concept. Meanwhile, the music video for Geek was only filmed after Shim Tong was notified that Don't Lie had been banned from music broadcasts, which would have been sometime around late August or early September of 2013. And well, this happened to also be when Shim Tong Entertainment managed to recruit their new boy group Alphabet. So considering Shintong Entertainment's history so far, doesn't it seem like more than a coincidence that Geek ended up being the way that it was? Good news folks, we just got ourselves a new boy group. Now get those girls into shorts. Alright girls, quick change of plans. Let's do some leg action. Obviously, none of us know for certain how everything played out, but considering the history here, I honestly wouldn't even be surprised if that was literally how things went. Regardless, it does seem awfully suspicious that Shim Tong only ever makes Global Icon do the boyish concept when they cannot actually find themselves a boy group. It's almost like they treated Global Icon as like their substitute boy group or something. And well, now that they had an actual boy group alphabet, Global Icon was basically no longer necessary. Unsure of what to do with them, Shintang Entertainment seemed to give up on Global Icon, and aside from the disastrous Echo release, the group basically did not put out any new music for the whole of 2014 and the majority of 2015. By this point, most people had assumed that the group had disbanded. But in late 2015, Shintang Entertainment unexpectedly announced that Global Icon will be making their first comeback since Geek with the song Doligo Doligo. Doligo Doligo was released on the 3rd of September 2015. And to say that the group was unrecognizable would honestly be an understatement. I mean, Shintang Entertainment basically took everything anyone knew about Global Icon and threw it straight out the window with this song. Of course, as you can see, instead of the baggy pants and short hair, the members were now wearing stilettos and short skirts. But it wasn't just a matter of the group becoming more feminine. This time, they had even changed the style of their music, and had completely ditched their signature raps and distinct hip-hop feel for a retro sound that was reminiscent of countless underrated girl groups of the time, such as Leisha, D-Holic, Hello Venus, Bambino, Tahiti, and many, many more. 
more. And to top it all off, the group also had a new lineup, with the inclusion of new members Do Kyung, Jia Min, and Hiso. Personally, I wouldn't say I liked the song, but I think it's pretty mediocre or average, and it definitely wouldn't have received half the backlash had it been any other group. But with Global Icon, their concept had always been a point of contention, and this was truly the last straw for many fans. From complete shock to utter denial, fans couldn't believe that this was what had become of their once beloved tomboy group. In their eyes, Global Icon had pretty much lost all their flavor and had become exactly what they promised not to be, monotonous. The company attempted to quell the backlash by saying that the members could go back to the boyish concept in the future, but the damage was done. The music video ended up with a pretty dismal like to dislike ratio, and the comment section was flooded with negative reviews, ranging from comments blaming the company for ruining the girls' careers, to rumors that the members were forced to take on this girlish concept against their will. But while fans absolutely hated this drastic concept change, the members actually seemed to love it. Out of all of the comebacks so far, this was the first one that truly reflected the members' feminine personalities. And one of the original members, Eunji, even made a post on Twitter saying that after two years of having to keep her hair short, she was relieved that she could finally have long hair for this comeback. It didn't matter how the members felt though, because as you can imagine, the comeback did abysmally. It seemed like the group was stuck between a rock and a hard place. While their original boyish image did attract some buzz, the concept seemed to be too niche for the general public. But when they finally switched up their concept to something more mainstream, it was already too late. The general public had lost interest, and all it did was turn the few fans that they did have against them. Realizing that they were on a sinking ship, the members started leaving one by one, causing Global Icon to unofficially disband sometime in 2016. Since then, some members have gone on to lead normal lives, while others have continued on their relentless pursuit of stardom, including one member Hiso, who is definitely a potential contender for the unluckiest idol, stay tuned for my next video. But regardless of their paths, there's one thing that all the members share in common. None, not a single one of them, has chosen to revert back to the boyish style from their debut era. Overall, Global Icon is definitely an example of how a unique concept can be a double-edged sword. While their tomboy image undoubtedly gave them a unique edge over other K-pop girl groups, it also did not reflect the members' personalities, and the expectations that the members stick to this concept ended up plaguing the group throughout the rest of their career. And you know, I often wonder how the members must have felt having to deal with the constant pressure to keep up their masculine facade. I guess this also brings up the issue of how some fans tend to assume that a group's concept is a true reflection of the members behind the scenes. And while this might be the case with some groups such as Fancy Red, the same can't be said for the vast majority of artists. The concept is one 이런 사람이 되어 버렸구나. 근데 위에서는 딱 제가 그렇게 뭐라 해야 세팅된 상태로 드라마 영화에서 연기를 하는 것처럼 무대 위에서 나도 연기를 한다라고 생각하고 했거든요. 아 얘는 평소에도 이러겠네라고 생각을 하시더라고요. 그게 되게 좀 힘들었어요. Often times, concepts are strategically assigned to a group based on things like demand, market trends, and in Global Icon's case, the need to fulfill their company's obsession with having exactly one boy group. But had fans known the full story behind Global Icon's original boyish image, do you think they would have still reacted to the concept change so negatively? Let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways, that concludes the bizarre story of Global Icon, K-pop's first tomboy group. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Be sure to check out my Patreon to see my team and I react to Global Icon's music videos. And lastly, don't forget to check out my TWICE K-pop countdown on Instagram and participate in my challenge on The Coos. I can't wait to see your responses. And with all that out of the way, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! 
Do you know of any other crazy K-pop groups? Let me know in the comment section down below, and you could be responsible for the next episode of Crazy K-pop Concepts.